Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about Animating Cycles is Easy, but Don't Tell Anyone by Victor Paredes. Some general information about this webinar is that, is that this will be recorded, it will be shared uh, via email to all registrants and attendees, but also will be hosted in our YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe and you'll receive a notification once it's available. Also, uh, we'll encourage you to send your question through the question, uh, question panel. We'll be selecting uh, your questions at the end of Victor's presentation. So with that, I will leave you with Victor and his presentation, Animating Cycles is easy, but don't tell anyone. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I will share my screen. Um, there. OK, well, I, I hope you are seeing my screen because I'm going to start now. Um, so I, I wanted to do this webinar, and I have a lot of information to give here. So I will try to be very quick with it, but also I will try to be as clear as possible. So please, if anything is not uh, working for you or, or you have any that, please put it in the in the question box there. So we are going to animate this character. This is an illustration created by Alfredo Cáceres. It's a Chilean illustrator, very good. You can you can look for him in on in his Instagram. He's really great. So he sent me this illustration. Uh, and this one is I have this here in Photoshop. It's it's just one layer with the character. So the first thing that you have to do when you want to animate a character made of a, an illustration is separate it in different parts. So this is not a tutorial about Photoshop, but I will show you a couple uh, tips to do this very quickly. So first, for instance, I, I want to separate the head. So I will use the lasso here. Oh no, not this one, this one, sorry. I will use the lasso. I am not a Photoshop expert, so I can make mix, mistakes with this. So I will just select the head all right, and I will copy and paste this in a, in a new layer, and then I can simply uh, erase the the parts that are not uh, part of the head. All right, so let's suppose we are happy with this. Uh, then, for instance, I want to have this neck, this cloth of the neck, and something that I do in order to do that is I use the lasso again, uh, but I select a bigger part of the neck, something like that. So I copy and paste. And now with the eraser, I just erase uh, the parts of the neck, but I continue erasing the rest of the neck. Even when I don't have the material there, I just continue erasing it, all right? So I just do that. I will make my eraser a bit bigger to erase everything. OK, and then. Uh, I need to fill all these parts just in case the character moves. In general, the character won't move too much, but in case you 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 see the other part of the of the neck, uh, I will just use the lasso mode here, and I will select the parts that I want to fix. For instance, this and this, and then I go to edit, fill, and use the uh, content aware um, fill here, preserving the opacity. It doesn't work great. But it creates some extra material. So and and you know I'm I'm very lazy, so I'm very happy with with this tool. And then maybe I, I just draw uh, the border and I can fix some details. But it is not too important really because probably there there will be other objects covering most of it. But basically I I like to do that because I, if I don't have this material, let's suppose I don't have this part. So I have my neck like this, and then I put the the head. The head works well, but as soon as I move it a little bit, then you can see it reveals that there is no material there. So that's why I want to I want to create more material just in case. All right. So here I have another Photoshop file um, with this character totally uh, separated in layers. So you can see I have the head here, I have the ear, and I created some extra material for the ear just in case I want to move it up and down. Uh, I have this. 
this part that I never remember the name, but this part of the body. I have the instrument here separated and also the strings are separated. Um, I have this part of the hand, the arm, and here you can see I use the same tool. Uh, it's not very pretty, but it doesn't matter too much for this example because probably you won't you won't see that uh, ugly part. So then I have the other part of the of the arm, and I have two hands here because I, I wanted to animate uh, the hands on the guitar, like animating the fingers. I have two hands so I can switch those fingers. And then I have the the legs, uh, this part of the body, which is very ugly also, as you can see, the, the, the arm, and then the, the log, okay? So this is the character we are going to use. This is a simplified version. I didn't put the cape or any other parts like the butterflies and stuff, because I want to uh, put everything, um, to, to teach you how to animate all this in this webinar, and it, it should be one hour long, so um, I will do my best to do it in that time. So that's it, that's a Photoshop file. Uh, you can create that if you don't know how to use Photoshop or if you have another uh, software to paint, you can use uh, Clip Studio, Krita, or any other software that uh, can create uh, PSD files, all right? The PSD files are these uh, images separated in layers that we can import into Moho. So now I have Moho here. Um, I will close some of these windows and I will create a new file. All right, and now I can simply take my Photoshop file. In this case, I have my Photoshop file here um, and I will just drag it. You can go to file, import and do it the long way, but I really like just to drag stuff. So now the software will ask me if I want to import this file as a composite. That means like all the layers together in one big layer or if I want the layers individually. So I will pick this one. And now you can see here that all the layers are being imported into the Moho file. Now, this Photoshop file is very big. Um, so I'm going to zoom out here. And with the Transform Bone tool, which is this one, sorry, the Transform Layer tool, this one, I will just scale this down because I want it to fit on my uh, output, which is this uh, blue rectangle. All right, and now um, we are going to rig this. We are going to add bones to this character. So the first thing is that if you see the layers here, the main layer uh, is a group layer, okay? So what I'm going to do is right click on this group layer and convert it to bone, okay? So now I click that and now you can see that the group has a little bone here. So now this is a bone layer and that means that now I can use some bone tools that I can see here. So now I'm going to use the add bone tool, this one, all right? Something that is very important before we start rigging the, the character is that all the construction of the character needs to happen uh, on frame zero. If you, if you look at the timeline here, I am on frame zero, okay? This is where everything is built. So if for any reason you were in a different frame, you can just drag this cursor here. If you were in a different frame, be sure to go back to frame zero here, okay? Because this is where you build the stuff, all right? So now with the add point, sorry, the add bone tool, I will start adding my first bone. And this is this will be the main bone that is like the parent of all the other bones. So I want actually like the stomach, the, the belly, the part of the belly to be the main bone. So I will just drag here a bone up, okay? So that is the main, the first bone I create. Then I will continue with the chest, and then I will continue with the head, all right? So this is the this is the rig I, has, I have so far, but I want to show you something else first before continuing rigging. So I will create another file, a new file, and I will create a new bone layer here, okay? And this part is very important if you want to rig a character. When you create a new bone with the add bone tool, you can see that bone is red, okay? When a bone, a bone is red, it means it is selected and it also means that the next bone you create will be a child, a child of that bone. So this is the like the belly, right? And now I will create the next bone and will be the chest 
and the chest is child of the of the belly or, or the stomach. I don't know how to call that bone. And then if I create the head, the bone for the head, that bone was uh, is, is child of the chest. But now, if I create the arm here, let's suppose I create both arms. So I will do here with a hand and then the other arm. What happened here is that if I test my character with this tool, uh, when I am creating the character and I want to test it, the manipulate bone tool, this one, uh, helps me to check how things are working. So if I move the main bone, is moving the entire character. If I move the chest, everything is working fine. But if I move the head, the head is actually moving the arms. And this shouldn't be happening, right? And also, if I move this other arm, it's also moving the left arm. So this is not really working, OK? And this is because when I was adding the bones, I didn't, uh, I didn't change what bone was red. So, so the parents are done not in a in, in a proper way. So let me just remove all these bones. I will just select them with the select bone tool here. So I, I am just selecting all of them, and I will press press delete on my keyboard, and I will start again. So let me start with the stomach here, then the chest, then the head. And now I want to create the the arm, but I want the arm to be child of the chest. So there are two ways to do this. The longer way is that you go to this oops, where you go to the select bone tool here, and with this tool you select the chest. All right, and now you can see the, the bone of the chest is red. So now you go back to the add bone tool and now create the arm. Okay. So this is the, this is the slower a slower way because you are switching tools. Now the quicker way is that for instance I want to create the other arm with the add point sorry the add bone tool this one I just hold Alt on my keyboard and I click on the chest and and you see now the chest is red so now I release Alt and I continue creating my bones so now if I test my character. Now the hierarchy is working fine. So I can move the head and the head is not moving the arms and the arms are both are moving independently. All right. So this is how it works. So I will delete this again. Now let's suppose you did it wrong. So you created the head. The ideal thing is that you, you should do this right from the beginning, but let's suppose you, you forgot about this. So now it is wrong if I, if I move the head it's moving the arms, the other arm, and yeah, it's it's a mess, this rig. We can also fix it with this tool here, um, the reparent bone tool, this, this one here. So when I select this tool, you can see there are some arrows here, okay? And these arrows, they, they tell me about um, the hierarchy of the character. So you can see, for instance, this hand, is child of the of the of this part of the arm and this part of the arm is child of this part of the arm and then this arm is actually child of the hand so that is wrong okay now to fix it with this tool there are two ways again the, the longer and the shorter way so the longer is you go to the select bone tool you select the bone you want to fix for instance this one then you go back to the repair and bone tool and now you click the new parent so for instance i want this arm which is selected now i just click on the chest and now you can see how the arrow goes to the chest now this is the long way the short way is i just hold alt on my keyboard and i click on the bone i want to fix so you can see it is red now i release alt on the keyboard and now i click on the chest all right so now you can see the hierarchy is working well and if i test this it is working fine. So ideally, you do it. You did it well uh, at the beginning, but if you made any mistake, you can fix it anyway. So I will go back to this file now, and I want to add the bones for the arms. So with the add bone tool, you see the the head is red here. So I want the chest to be red. So I will hold Alt on my keyboard, click on the chest, release Alt, and I will add a few bones for the arm. So now you can see. And now I will hold Alt again on my keyboard, click on the chest, and create some bones for the other arm. 
okay? Now I want to create the legs. So I want the legs to be child of the, of the stomach. So I will alt and click this bone. So you can see this red now, and I will create one leg here, three bones. I'm just dragging there, alt and click again. And now I will create the other leg here. Um, now, if I need, for instance, here it's not looking well. If I need to fix that, I can just go to the transfer bone tool, this one, and I can rotate this bone to be in a better angle there. All right. Now, what I want to do is also I want to add a bone for the instrument. Okay. But I want this bone of the instrument to be totally independent. I don't want it to have any parent. So what I'm going to do is if if no bone is red, if no bone is selected, that means that the new bone I will create won't, won't have any parent. So to do that, I will just unselect all the bones. And the easiest way to do that is simply to press escape with the keyboard. I'll just press escape and you see there is no red bone anymore. So now I will create a new bone here and this will be the bone of the instrument, okay? And that bone is totally independent to the rest of the body, okay? And you will see why uh, in, in some minutes, but that's it. So now we have uh, our skeleton done, skeleton done and, and we can test it. And again, we can test it with this tool, the manipulate bone tool, all right? And let's see how it works. Perfect. Um, of course, it's not working, uh, but don't worry, this is, this is totally normal. So what is happening here is that you see that the bones, they have uh, some ovals around. That, those ovals are the strength of the bones, of each bone. And you can modify that strength uh, if you go to this tool here, the bone strength tool, all right? So with this bone, you can drag right or left in a bone to define if you want it stronger or weaker, okay? So the stronger it is, the more pixels it will take, okay? Or vectors. In this case, we are working with pixels because we, we are working with images, but th the same applies to vectors, all right? So in some of the rigs, you can fix this by applying different strengths, but our, our character is so complex that this is not really going to help much. But don't worry, the, the fix is very, very simple. So what I need to do now, because what is happening here is that by default, all the images inside of this bone layer are affected by every single bone. So the strength of every bone is fighting to each other to move the pixels of every image. So what we need to, to do is to tell the software, okay, I want some of the images, I want to move them with these bones and some of the images, I want, the, I, I want to move them only with these other bones. So basically you are defining, you are assigning bones to the images. So to do that, for instance, I will start with the head. So I will select the head. I will, um, I will go to the select bone tool and that automatically will reset um, all that mess that I created when I was testing. Don't worry, nothing is really animated there. It's just, uh, it shows you how it will look once you are done. So I, I use the select bone tool and now you can see I have the head selected, okay? And you can see all the other layers are in black and white. And this is because if I go to display quality, uh, I can check this uh, part, fade and selected layers. So if I click this, you can see I can fade the other layer. So when I do tutorials, I, I like to use this option because it makes it easier to, for you to see what layer I have selected. So I'm going to start with the head layer. So I want the head to follow this bone. So I just select this bone with the select bone tool. And now I can go to the menu bone and use selected bones for flexi binding, okay? So with this menu, I will assign that bone to that image, all right? So this image is not going to follow any other bone. And I have a shortcut here, Control Shift F. If you are in a Mac, it will be uh, Command Shift F. Um, so I will, I will use the, the shortcut now, but if I click this, now you can see the bone is a bit bolder, and that means 
that bone is going is going to control that layer. So I will continue with the next layer, for instance, the ear. I want also the ear to follow that bone, so I will press Control Shift F, and now I will select the horn. That was the word, um, the horn, and I will select the head and also Control Shift F because I want the horn to follow the same bone. Okay. Now I have this other layer here. Uh, this is the hand, and actually I want to bend this layer with two bones. So I'm going to select this bone, and if I want to select a second bone, I just press and hold uh, shift on my keyboard and then I select the second bone so now I have both bones selected and I will press ctrl shift f so now I'm telling the layer you are going to be bent only with those two bones um, so now I go to the other hand and I want in this case I want this hand to move with the bone of the hand but a little bit also with the bone of the arm so I select both of them and ctrl shift f and the other hand that is behind there, I will do the same, Control shift f Now the strings I have here, they will, in this case, they will follow the instrument here. So I will select the instrument, so I'm, I'm assigning that. Then the instrument is also going to follow that bone, so I'm just pressing Control shift f to assign them. The neck, I want the neck to be bent with the chest, but also a little bit with the belly, so I will select these two bones and Control shift f Then this arm is going to move only with this bone. Then the leg is going to move, be moved by these three bones. So I, I just select these three bones and Control shift f The other leg, the other three bones, Control shift f This part of the hand is going to be bent by these two bones. Uh, this arm is going to move with this bone and this bone, Control shift f And the chest, which is like, let me show you here, is this big layer there, um, is going to be moved with this and this. So Control shift f And finally, the log, uh, this one. I don't want it to follow any bone because this is not part of the body, actually. So what I, ca I can do is I can go to bone, and select release layer. So when I click this, it means that this layer is not going to follow any bone. Okay, it's totally free. So it will uh, stay still. All right. And now I can go back to the bone layer here and go to the manipulate bone tool. And now I can test my character. And you can see it is working much better. I can move each part independently. Uh, some of the layers are bending because they are moving with two bones. Okay and I can move the entire body, and I can move the instrument too, all right? And also, if you don't like how something is bending, for instance, I don't like how this leg is bending, you can adjust the strength of the bones to work in a better way, so maybe you like it more like that, all right? But let's suppose we are happy with this. All right, remember, if you have any question, put it in the, in the questions uh, box. And we will try to answer all of them later, or most of them, at least. So now we are almost done with the rigging part, but there is one more thing I want to show you. And to make it simpler, I will create a new file and create a new bone layer, okay? And I will create um, a character because I want to create target bones, all right? So let me show you what target bones are. So let's suppose this is the body of my character, and this is one leg, and this is another leg, right? And if I test this rig, you can see it's working fine. Um, I mean, the hierarchy and everything, but if I move the body, the legs are floating, all right? And this, this is not bad, uh, <laughs> um, but it's not what we want. I want the legs to stay on the ground. So to do that, I'm going to use a target bones. So a target bone is just a simple bone. So I will create a new bone with the add bone tool. And in this case, I want the target to not have, an, not have parent at all. So I will press escape on my keyboard. And now I will create a bone here. This is going to be the target. Now I will uh, press escape on the keyboard again, 
and I will create the second target bone. All right. Now, to create a target bone, I mean to make this bone to be a target bone, I need to go to the select bone tool, select the bone, and if you see here, the bone has a name here at the top. It is called B8. Okay. You can change the name of the bone if you want. Um, I really like this name, so I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. So if you have this B8 bone, please remember that name. All right. So we select it just to remember that, that name. And now what I need to do is I need to select this bone of the leg because this is the bone that will follow that target. All right. So I select that bone and now I can go to the bone constraints pop up here. So I just click it, click it and that will open a new window here. And this window has a target section here. And in the target section, I will say B8, which was the name of, the, of that bone. And you can see how automatically this little circle appeared. That means that that bone now is a target bone. So I will just close this. And now if I test my character with the manipulate bone tool, you can see that the leg, the, the foot is in the same place now. It's not floating anymore. All right. So that is the long part, the, the long way to do this. Now there is a shorter way. And to do it way, way shorter and without checking any name of the bones, I will use again the reparent bone tool. Okay. And I will hold Alt on the keyboard and click over the bone that I want to I want to assign the target bone. So in this case, is this other part of the leg? And now I will hold Control on my keyboard, and I will click over the target, and that automatically created the, this little circle. So now this bone is a target. Okay. So now if I test my body, you can see both legs are working. All right. Now there is something that I don't like and is that the feet are rotating here. Okay. And that doesn't look good because it doesn't look like it is standing on the ground. So what I'm going to do is to use the select bone tool and I will select both feet. Okay. And I will go to bone constraints and I will check independent angle. So that means those bones are not going to rotate. They will only rotate if I, manually rotate them, all right? So now you can see they are working much better now. They don't rotate, all right? So this is the most basic use of a target bone. Uh, you, you create them to create, a, uh, to create legs. Now I will delete this because we can do something very similar with the guitar or the instrument of the character here, right? So I, I'm going to reproduce that. So let's suppose we have a body here and then independent to that, we have a, we have the guitar or the instrument. Okay. And now I will create, sorry, a child of the, of the chest, right? I will create one arm like that. And now I will create another arm like that. So let's suppose this is my character is holding the guitar. Okay. And now I'm going to create targets for the hands. But actually, I want those targets to be child of the guitar because I want those targets to follow the guitar. So I will press Alt and click on the guitar and I will create one target here. I will do it like very big so you can see it. And then Alt and click and another target here. All right. And now I will simply assign the targets. So Alt and click here and then Control over the target. Alt and click here and control over the target. Okay. So now if I test my character now, you can see that if I move the guitar, the hands are following it. All right. And now the hands are rotating a little bit. So I'm going to select them. Remember these two are the hands and I will set them as independent angle. And now if I test my guitar here, you can see they are not rotating anymore. So I can still move the body, but the character will always hold the guitar. So now I'm going to come back to this. Um, sorry. Oh. So to this character and I will do the same. So 
I will just create a new bone and this new bone will be child of the instrument. So I will put it here and then a second bone that, that it will be here. And now I will assign the target. So I'm pressing Alt and click and then Control and click. All right. So now if I test this, you can see how the hands are following the instrument. So now I will set these hands as independent angle. It's looking better now. And now I will assign some targets for the feet. So I will press escape because I want these targets to have no parent. So I will create one here, escape, another one here, escape. And now with the reparent bone tool, alt and click, and then control and click, and then alt and click, and then control and click. And finally, we'll set the legs, the feet as independent angle here. All right. So now I can move the instrument. I can move the character and the legs are still on the ground. All right. And now our character is ready to be animated. Okay. So to show you how to animate the characters, I will, uh, the character, I will have to create a new file again to show you one final concept. Uh, I will create a bone layer here and I will create a couple bones, one bone here and another bone here. All right. So this is how you animate in Moho. Um, let's suppose I want to rotate the first bone in frame 12. So I will simply move to frame 12 here. And now I will select the transform bone tool. All right. And I will rotate this bone here in frame 12. And now let's suppose I want the other bone to move in frame 27. So I will, I just go to frame 27 here. And now I rotate this bone to the other side. All right. And now you can see in the timeline that actually we have two channels here. Let me just zoom in here. And both for rotation, we have the red rotation channel and the gray rotation channel. Okay. The red channel shows me the movement of the bone that I have selected. So this bone is selected right now. And the software is telling me, okay, this bone has an initial pose in frame zero, and then it moves until frame 27. That is the movement that bone have. All right. And the software shows me that in the red line. Now, if I select the other bone with the select bone tool, I will just click this other bone. So this bone is red now. You can see that the red line shows me that that selected bones, selected bone moves from here to here. And you can see the movement of both of them. So the first one, the one on the left, stops at frame 12, and the second one stops at frame 27. Okay? So that is how the red line works. It's, it, it shows you whatever you have selected. And the other one, the gray line, is like a summary of the entire animation. So it shows you the keyframes of every single bone. So if there is movement in any of the bones, you will see keyframes here. So the way you use it is that if you want to animate or to change a detail, then you modify whatever it, it is in the red line. If you want to modify the general animation, like the overall animation, then you use the gray line, the gray channel. Okay. And this, in this case, we have been rotating the bones, but we can also with the tra transform bone tool, we can also move them. So I'm just moving the bone and you can see here, we have a new channel, the translation channel, and it also has a red one and a gray one. Okay. And it works in the same way. It shows me the movement of that. Of that. So to, to translate uh, a bone, you just select the little dot here at the bottom of the bone, and then you just drag. And that is how you translate a bone. So now we have that animation there. And the other dot works to scale the bone. So if you drag over this bone to the left or to the right, you are scaling that bone. Okay, and then you have a scale channel too. So you see we have three channels in red and three channels in gray. Okay. And this is, these are only the, the channels for bones, but uh, most of the channels in Moho, they work in this way. Okay. So now I will go back to my character. So we are going to start animating here. Um, all right. So let's say 
with the transform bone tool, I want in on frame one here, I want this character to start rotating here to the left. Then maybe on frame nine, I want it to rotate to the right. And then in frame, I don't know, 17, I will copy and paste the first keyframe here because I want the character to go back to that initial uh, rotation. So I have this animation and I will create a cycle with this. So to create a cycle, I just right click over the last keyframe here and select cycle. All right, and that will open the, the keyframe window. But now if I hit play here, you can see this character has that cycle and just moves forever in that way. Okay. If maybe this is too fast, I can just select all these keyframes here and I can hold Alt on the keyboard and drag the last one to make it slower. So now this is moving slower. Okay, so we have the first part of the of the character moving. Now let's say we want to also move the head. So maybe the character will start with the head up, then down then up and then uh, then down and then back here to the original rotation there. So I will copy and paste and I can create a cycle with that. And now if I hit play, I have the character doing that. Nothing too fancy happening here, all right? If we want to add more rhythm to it, uh, we can scale. I always like to scale the belly. So maybe it will start very small and then uh, around here it will go up and then maybe here it will be small again so I will copy the scale keyframe copy and paste and then I will select this one and create a cycle so now the character is also scaling there all right so let's suppose we are happy uh, with this cycle all right I know it's not great <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with very little things um, so I'm very happy with this cycle, but the problem is that this is actually not a cycle. And I will show you this with, um, the idea here is to create a fluid cycle, something that starts at and ends exactly with the same pose. So then if you export it as an animated GIF or anything that you need it to cycle, it needs to be fluid. But in this case, if I, for instance, if I set the in and out here and I hit play, you can see the character has a little hiccup. It's not really cycling and I can try with different frames, but I actually will never get a totally fluid animation here because I didn't plan my, my cycle. So they are not hitting the same frames at the, sa uh, at the same time. So they will never be exactly the same at the beginning and at the end, all right? And that is a problem. You can get close, but you will never get a uh, a perfect cycle okay now just in case uh, the way I set this in and out uh, to create the in I just hold control on the keyboard and I press uh, and I click so that way I, I I create the in and then to create the out I just hold control and right click and that creates the the out so now the animation is going to see cycle there uh, if you want to remove this you just press control and click and remove them. That's it. Right. So now, what is the way to create a good a good cycle? Then um, this is not a rule, uh, but this is something that works for me, and I wanted to show you how I create the cycles. In, in my case, maybe it will be useful for you. So for me, the the first thing I I like to think is how long will be my longest cycle of this character okay and normally this is not a rule again this is just what i normally do it is two seconds okay so normally my cycle my longest cycle of the animation it, it lasts two seconds so i'm going to go to two seconds here which is frame 48 but actually i'm going to go one frame after that to frame 49 um, I will tell you why later, but so I'm, I'm on frame 49 and I will create a marker here. You see this little button with this button, I can create a marker. Um, so 
I, I just create a marker to know how long my cycle is. All right. So now let's suppose this will be the cycle of the of this bone. So it will rotate left. Maybe then in the middle it will rotate right. And then at the end, I will copy and paste the first keyframe there. All right. And that will be my cycle. So now I have a very uh, slow cycle going right uh, and left. Okay. Now, let's suppose I want to create inside of this cycle, I want to create a smaller cycle. Okay. In order to this, uh, for this to work, the, the second larger cycle needs to be half of the first one. So if this cycle is one second, the second one should be, sorry, if the, if the longest one is two seconds, then the second one should be one second. Okay. So frame 24 is one second, but I will go one frame after that. And I will put a marker here. So this will be my second cycle. So now let's suppose, let me think what, think what I can do here. Uh, maybe the leg. So I will just take the target bone of the leg. Uh, and maybe it will keep, a, it will remain still until frame nine. And then in frame 13, it will go up. And then in frame, I don't know, 17, it will go down. Actually, I will copy and paste this keyframe. So it will go down to the exact same position. And then it will stay still until the last frame. So I will copy and paste this one, all right? So now I create a cycle with that. And you can see the leg is going with that cycle. Not, not very fancy. No. I, I don't like what we have here, but it's just to show you um, how it works. Now, let's suppose, uh, in my case, I rotated the, the belly, right? I rotated this bone, but let's suppose I, I want a rotation also for the chest. So I will start a long cycle for the chest here. Please don't worry about what is breaking there. So it will start rotating to the left. Then in second one, it will rotate to the right. And then in second two, it will go back to the original rotation here. And I will create a cycle with that. Okay. And now I test this and it looks very bad, right? And this is because the, the two cycles are happening at the same time. Okay. But we can do what we can do here is actually if I select this keyframe that has the cycle there, the last keyframe of the chest bone, you can see in the in the keyframe window that we have two options. We have the, the option of a, an absolute cycle and we have the option of a relative cycle. Okay. So an absolute cycle goes back to frame two. And it doesn't matter where this keyframe is, the cycle, you see the arrow here, the cycle will always go to frame two. It always goes back here, okay? It doesn't matter where I move this one, all right? That is an, an absolute cycle. But now if I select a, a relative cycle, what the software will do is actually count 47 frames back and then put the, the cycle there. So that means that if I move this keyframe, the cycle also moves. You can see the arrow is also moving here. Okay. So basically I can move the, the position of the cycle in the timeline. So that means that for instance, if I select these three keyframes of this cycle of the, of the chest, I can move this to happen a little bit later. So things are not going to happen at the same time. So now you can have a, a more fluid animation there. Of course, I can fix that. It's maybe it's rotating too much to the left, but anyway, I have that. And you can see the movement now feels a bit more natural because things are not moving at the same time. Okay. Actually, let me show you in a new file this. Uh, I think I have a, a more clear, exa clear example. So let's suppose you have a fish. So uh, you have a fish with three bones. This is the tail of a fish. And I'm going to create a cycle of this going every, every bone rotating up, then every bone rotating down. And then here in second one, every bone rotating up again. And I will create a cycle with all this. So a cycle for the three bones. 
and I will set it as a, re as a relative cycle. So if I look at it, the moment is, is very boring because everything is happening at the same time. But if I select these two bones now, so I, I selected the two bones to the, of the extreme, and I delay the keyframes of them, I can get something more interesting and something more natural happening there. And if I take only the last one and I delay it even more, I get something much more natural happening there. And it's it's the same cycle, it's the same movement, but you can see it looks way better. And one good thing about this is that this cycle actually lasts one second. So if I, pre I put the in and out in one second, you have a fluid cycle there. So I can export these frames and the cycle will run perfectly and very smoothly. Okay, so let me go back to this. So this is basically what is happening here with the chest and, and we could create something similar uh, for, the, for the head actually. So maybe the head is going to start rotating up to, then rotating down here and then rotating up and I will create a, sorry, the last one should be the same as the first one. So now I will, I just copy it and paste this one here. And now I will create a cycle. It will be a relative cycle. And I, uh, I will just delay it and test it how it works. Now, now you can see how the, the, the head is uh, moving with a delay there. So it looks more natural. All right. So, so far we have two cycles. One of the cycles um, is during one second, is, is lasting one second, and the second one is lasting uh, one second. And now I can create one that will be half of one second, all right? So half of one second is 12 uh, frames. So I will create the cycles on the cycle on frame 13. So one frame more than 12. So I will create a marker here. Uh, and let me see what we can do here. Maybe uh, I will animate the target of the guitar. So maybe this character will have the hand up in frame one, then in frame seven, the hand will go down. And then in frame 13, I will copy and paste this one because I want the hand to go up again and I will create a cycle there. So this cycle is relative now and I have that, all right? So let's see, it is working. And now I will create a similar cycle, but for the hand rotation. So let's say the hand starts rotating up, then it goes down, and then in frame 13, it goes up again. So I create a cycle with that, and I will create a relative cycle, because if you look at this cycle, the, the moment is kind of boring because the hand is rotating at the same time the the, the target is moving up and down, so I will delay it a little bit. So you can see we have a more fluid movement now. So it's very similar to the tail of the fish I was showing to you. Okay, and we can continue uh, creating cycles for this. So maybe it will add uh, some scale for this bone. So it will scale down and maybe up and maybe in frame 13, it will go down again and I will create a cycle with that a relative cycle, and let me see how it works. So now it has more, a little bit of more rhythm there. All right. So now we, we said that um, our, our longer cycle is two seconds. So that means that if I preview two seconds, for instance, I will start from second three and finish one frame before second five, if I hit play there, my cycle is totally fluid. The, the first and the last frame are exactly the same, so it's, it's working. And actually, you can check that. If I see frame 72, and now if I go to frame 120, you can see they are exactly the same. Now, in my final cycle, in my final export, I won't export frame 120 because it, it's actually the same. So if I, if I export that, I will have one frame repeated. So that's why I removed one frame here. So my cycle is actually from frame 72 to frame 119. All right. Uh, let's add some more movement here. So we are going to move the instrument up. 
down and then up again and I can create a relative cycle with that and maybe delay it a little bit. So you see it, it, it starts to feel more natural just by delaying the cycles there. Um, and then we can have a shorter cycle too. Uh, so the shorter one should be half of this one. So it will be half of a, sorry, a quarter of a second, but plus one frame. So it will be frame seven. So I will create a, a marker here and I don't know what to move with this one. Um, let's move the other, the other foot. So it will start here, then it will go up and then it will go down. So it's a very short, uh, cycle there. And I will cycle this relative just in case. So now we have that. It doesn't look too good, uh, but maybe I will scale it up so it will be twice as long. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of better. All right. Now, if you, what time is it? Let me see. Okay, we have some time. If you uh, don't like any of the movement, so maybe you don't like the movement of the head, you can still fix it. Uh, maybe it's turning up too much. So I could modify the keyframes here, but I can also go to the motion graph. So if I click on this tab here, the motion graph, um, I have I have this bone selected. I have the bone of the head selected. And here I can see the rotation channel. So if I double click on the rotation channel, I can see the graph of the movement of this channel. So you can see this curve going up and down, all right? So for instance, if in the in the cycle, it is going up too much, I can select these two keyframes and move them down a bit. So maybe I like it more like that and maybe it is moving down too much also. So maybe something like that I like more. Okay, so you or you can take all of them and just try maybe all of them higher, all of them uh, lower. So you can try that. Okay, or you can add more stuff here. If you have, you want something more crazy, you can double click here to create a new keyframe and maybe add some shaking to the to the head. I don't know how this is going to work, but maybe it's, it's too little the shake. Yeah, it's shaking. It's not too noticeable, but uh, I promise you it, it is happening. So uh, <laughs> there, uh, maybe that's too much. But anyway, you can modify this in the in the graph mode. Now, um, I will undo because I really don't like the final result of that. Um, let me just undo. One last thing I want to show you. You have the cycle there. Is that we can create um, a smart bone to rotate the head a little bit? Okay, so let's do that. So this is not a tutorial about the smart bones, but I, I want to show you some basic concepts of this. So the first thing is, since I want to simulate a rotation of the head, I want to create a mesh for the head. So I just select the head layer here, and go to draw and create a smart warp layer. All right, and that will create this uh, vector here. And in this vector, using the add point tool, which is this one, I can simply add more points to this mesh. So for instance, if I want to move the eye, I can just drag to surround the, the eye. And maybe I will create some lines here to protect the border of the character. Uh, let's say something like that. And maybe we'll create a couple lines here. And then I want to separate the, the ear and the horn from the rest of the, the head. So now this is a new vector layer that contains that, ma uh, that mesh. So I need to assign a bone to this one. So I, I will go, I will select this bone and I will go to bone and use selected bones for flexi binding because I want this mesh to also move with the head. All right. So everything is working normally here but now we have this mesh okay so now we are going to create the smart bone so um i will just create a new bone here with no parent all right something like that and i can select it and i can name it head 
let's just call it head. So now, yeah, it has that name. And I can click here on show label when I have it selected. So now the bone is showing his uh, its name. And now I will open, I will go to window here on the top and I will open the actions window, which is this, this little window here. And I have the bone selected here. So now if I create a new action, that action automatically will have the name of the bone. So that means that action is related to the bone already. Okay, so it will be a, the action of the smart bone. So I press OK. And now around second four, what I'm going to say is I will go to second four here. I am inside of the action now. I will rotate this bone up. And when, what I am doing is I will tell the software, OK, every time this bone rotates up, I want the ear here, the layer of the ear. I am just using the transform layer tool. I will just move it down. And the same for the horn. I'm going to move it down and then I will use the mesh and using the select points tool, I will just select these points and then I will move them up and I will start moving some points up to simulate a rotation. So you can see how the mesh is moving, uh, is moving the bitmap, the, the, the Photoshop layer, and maybe it will move this a bit higher. So now I'm just moving the points. Uh, let's see how that works. Let's suppose I'm happy with this. Okay, so it's a little simulation of a rotation. So once I am done, I can go back to the actions window and I can double click on the main line. So that takes me back to my original animation. And now actually I can hide the vector layer because I don't need to see it anymore. Uh, and now I can also animate this head turn. So let's say, this character uh, starts normally and then it rotates up here and then it ends normally. So I will just create a simple cycle there and create a little cycle there, relative again. And now you can see how the character is rotating the head. Okay. So this is how you animate this kind of details. Um, so, and they, they can give a lot of life to the to the character and to the animation. And actually they are not too hard to do. Uh, so these are the little tricks, but yeah, this is how this animation was done. I think I am done. I, I hope you have some questions because I want to drink some water while I listen to them. So yes, yeah, let me know. Thank you so much, Victor, for this incredible presentation. Uh, thank you all who connected today with us. Uh, we asked from where, were you watching this webinar? So we just want to say hi to, for example, Hannah from Indonesia, Nick from Colorado, Luis from Philippines, Jay Glasgow, Jorge Madrid from Spain, there's Paulina from Chile, Valparaiso, etc. etc. So thank you all uh, for connecting. Um, well, Luis said, I I'm learning a lot. Uh, I'm glad I signed up for the webinar, so thank you. Also, good from Elizabeth, good job with the instruction on this tutorial. I love the wave bar manipulation. I think that's the motion graph. Uh, so awesome. let's go with our first question from Luisa mm -hmm. uh, from Portugal. Yeah. Say thank you so much for showing your progress. Do you think it's necessary to have a good knowledge of anatomy to an animate a body, animal or magical creature moving more naturally? I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't. I, I want. I don't want to say anything wrong because the animation community could be watching. Uh, no, I mean, if you want to animate something very, very well, yes, yes, always. But I personally don't have much knowledge about that, so I'm always like improvising and testing stuff to see how it works. So I guess yeah, it is always better. But you gotta still try if you don't know. I guess. Mhm. Mm Another question from Adil, how to export it into a MP4 format? Oh yeah, the export the stuff. Um, it's very simple. So for instance, I want to export this uh, this cycle, okay? And, and we said that this cycle starts from 72 to 119. So what I will do is I will go to File and Project Settings 
and here I will set uh, the start frame to um, 72 and the end frame to 119. So now you can see that the this blue green, green blue bar is here. So this is the length of my animation. So now I can simply go to file uh, and go to sorry I will go to file without the zoom um, and go to export animation here or press Control E. And now you can simply select video here and select MP4. Uh, and here you can you can choose the folder where you want to export this and the name. For instance, I will name this like that. Maybe we'll remove that. Um, and you have some extra options. Okay, so now you hit OK. And the software is going to start exporting that animation. So depending the speed of your computer, uh, it will be faster or slower. My computer is not great, so it's, it's not too fast. But now we have the video there, and that's it. Uh, and you can do the same with the animated GIFs or any other format, really, or image segments or anything. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, another question from Juanita Vélez. And how can you create an arc motion uh, for translation animation? Um, you have several options, I guess. Let me think. When you let me just create a new file for that. Um, for instance, if you move a bone, let's say this bone starts here and ends here. Okay, you can see the path of the bone, so you can always create uh, more keyframes to create some kind of arc. Um, you can also go to the motion graph double click on the layer translation and you can select this first keyframe right click and set bezier and with bezier you can create that arc so you can modify that so now we have that arc of movement now normally when you are working with bones since you are you are using a chain of bones uh normally you already have uh, a big part of the arcs already done because the, the characters by default they move in arcs but this is how you can do it for other cases and you can also of course if you want to define arcs you can create a new layer and draw some of the arcs uh, and have some references there too uh, but i think this is yeah these are the basic ways to do it mm -hmm. Uh, another question, well, a lot of questions are regarding the webinar. Yes, the webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Also, in the chat of this webinar, we shared the link where you can file the PSD file. So later, after this webinar, you can play with the character, rig it, and follow Victor, Victor tutorial. And also another question um, from Victoria. Uh, could you show one? Uh, uh, let me see the question. Could you show how one might animate swap out multiple layers? Example, if one has two separate hand gesture and you want to swap yeah. between the two and the left and the right, or creating yeah, match shapes. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to create that and then. I forgot. <laughs> so that's a good question. Uh, do you remember I had two hands uh, here? So I, ha I have a group here. And this group actually has uh, two hands. I will hide one. So you can see both there. Um, so what I can do is I can simply right click. This is a group. So I can right click the group and I can convert it to a switch. And a switch is a is a kind of group that shows you only one of the layers that it contains. So it will show me one hand or the other, not both. Uh, and then I can I can simply animate that. So if I right click on the switch, I can select which layer I want to show. So for instance, I, I want to show this one. It will create a keyframe here, this long keyframe, and then I can go to another frame right click on the layer 
and select the other one and that will that will change um let me just close the zoom here so let's suppose i want to create a cycle with this so now i can right click and it's, it's the same thing i can right click on the switch layer create a cycle and now the hands are changing i don't know how visible is that but you can see they are changing there so you can apply the same principle for lip sync or anything and of course it will look better if i actually move this hand but i didn't uh so i will do now so if we start this hand here maybe it will go down here then it will stay here for a little bit and then it will go back here and then i will create a cycle with that so yeah maybe it's too fast but that's the idea uh, i will just extend it there yeah so now you have the hand moving there so the more the more layers you have the more options you you will have and you can of course draw new ones uh, while you are animating perfect thank you victor uh, we're running out of time, but we have two more questions to go. One mm -hmm. is, uh, can you do this in Moho Debut? Um, Import yes, PSD files? Most, no, 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 sorry? Importing PSD files? No, you can't import. Yeah, you're right, Mario. Thank you. So in Moho Debut, you can't import uh, the layers of a PSD file, but you could separate your character into different PNG files, like import if, if import several images, you can do that. Uh, you could also draw your own character inside of Moho. Um, and most, many of the tools I showed here are part of the view, like the keyframes and how to create cycles, all that is part of the view. Uh, the meshes, the graphic mode, um the smart bones that those are not part of, of the view so yeah you, you can create a cycle very similar to it but not as deep as this one i guess mm -hmm. and the last question uh, can you apply the mesh warp uh, to a vector layer yes mm -hmm. <laughs> okay i need to show it oh um <laughs> Yeah, you, you can have your super character here and I can create a vector. I can triangulate the, this vector mesh. So I, oops, wait, I can just start adding points and that will create a mesh. So let's suppose something like that. I want to separate the eyes. Uh, let's say that, and then I will separate the Oh, sorry, I, I made a mistake here, there. And then the only thing is that you need to assign that manually. Um, so if you double click in a vector layer, in this case where I have the face created, I just open the properties, I go to the vector tab, and here I have the smart warp layer option. So here I, you will see a list of all your meshes. So my mesh is called layer two because I'm very original with the names. Um, so I just, Press OK, and now that layer is assigned. So now I can I can move these uh, points of the mesh, and that will move the that will move the vector. And actually, if you want to see a character with the uh, with a mesh applied to the vector, uh, you can open the library there in the corner of the uh, of the screen, and you can look for Vitruvian. And actually, the the Vitruvian man here. Uh, it's made of vector layers, as you can see here, and he has a mesh. So, so you can distort the mesh, and the mesh distorts the vectors. So, it works in a similar way to uh, an image, but actually you have like uh, smoother lines and better resolution, and all the benefits of the vectors. But that's it. So with that, thank you so much, Victor, uh, for this amazing webinar. Thank you. Uh, one last bit of information for you. Moho is your all-in-one animation software. 
Moho is a powerful 3D animation software that combines the most powerful animation technology with state-of-the-art professional animation tools. Draw, rig, and animate easily. You can create your characters directly in Moho with its vector tools optimized for animation or import Photoshop files keeping the link and layer structure. For more information, visit our website mohoanimation.com. And again, as a reminder, this webinar has been recorded and, up and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So please subscribe to receive a notification once it's ready and follow us in our other social media channels, in Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and now also on TikTok. So with that, thank you so much, Victor. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If you have more questions, please uh, send us some comments. And also in the YouTube channel for the people who are is watching this in the YouTube channel now in the future. Mm -hmm, Comment, exactly. subscribe, and yeah, follow us everywhere. That's yes, uh, stay tuned with us. Uh, we'll leave the link to download the PSD also on the YouTube uh, post. So thanks again and see you in our next event. Bye-bye.